Hello, welcome back. This is going to be the last section discussing the final exam solution. Thanks for staying and keeping uh, your interest alive till the last section. Hope you are following so far the three solutions that I have shared. Now this is going to be the last section, section um, which is a bit easier except this may be the first question that I am going to discuss now. Okay, so this is talking about NZCB flag. Okay, uh, now I am sure all of you are aware what this NZCB means. This is a negative flag, the zero flag and carry flag and overflow flag. Now why did we order this way? Because that is how these flags are ordered inside the processor status register or application processor status register wherein the MS nibble is ordered this way. If you are reading this flag which is a status flag, uh, is a special register sorry, this is whole thing is called the APSR uh, processor status register, it is a special register and we need to use a special instruction to read this uh, register. Now you need to understand about what is the register is all about. See, whenever the processor CPU is performing some arithmetic operation or logical operation, various instructions, okay, every instruction that CPU executes based on the design, based on the way the instruction is, you know, uh, designed, some of them may affect these flags. That means this affects, these flags are there as a part of this special register and any instruction which is supposed to impact this flags will change these values. So suppose if I am performing an add operation, okay, um, I am doing add or 0, comma or 0, comma R1. That means R1, whatever is the content in R1 and whatever is there in R0 is added and put into R0. Now when this arithmetic operation is performed, it is default affects all the flags. So whatever may be the previous value, it could be all zeros or all one or it could be anything. Based on the operation here, whatever addition is being performed, this flags will be affected. The result, okay, result is put here and then if the result happens to be all zeros, suppose R0 is filled with 0, then 0 flag will be set. And if this addition resulted in a carry, then a carry flag will be set. If if you are assuming the you know, contents of R0 and R1 are a signed quantity and there is a overflow, that means the addition, after performing the signed addition, the result is not possible to be fit into the particular register R0. Maybe the result is going out of the range. Then overflow flag will be set. And if the result happens to be a negative value, that means MSB is set. Okay. Whether you are treating this as negative flag or not is your our own assumption. Maybe we are treating this whole content in R0 as unsigned number, then you should ignore the N value. But if it is a signed number, then the MS bit, if it is set, then the negative flag will be set. So it is actually a result of whatever is happening in the arithmetic. Okay, uh, it could be logical operation also or any other uh, mal instruction or div instruction, whichever instruction the CPU is executing. If it is supposed to impact the flag, then that would happen. Okay, so that's how you should understand the significance of NZCV or the status flags that processor has. So let me maybe erase this content uh, to create okay now what are we supposed to do what will be returned by the below assembly function i want the result to be returned now to find the result you should do the following you have to perform these operations right give the steps by going through the code for computing various flag values now how do you compute the flag value you have to perform the add operation so that you can compute what is will be the values in NZCB. So, so as I told you that NZCB is the most significant symbol of APSR. Okay. Now, before I go into this uh, rest of the thing, I want to explain about the MRS instruction. There are two special instructions, MRS and MSR. Now, let me write MRS instruction first. Okay. APSR. APSR is a special register. See, normal operations, whatever you are using R0, R1, R2, we can use the, them easily. You can move from 1 R1 to R0 or whatever, but you cannot use the move instruction to move from APSR to R0 because that instruction is not available. 
we need to use a special instruction. Now, how do you remember which is moving from where? If SR is there, then the status register is moving into a special general purpose register. Okay. So, APSR can be given. Uh, you can even mention any other special register, but we are interested in knowing the flags which are there in this uh, higher nibble. We want the copy of that. The rest of it will be zeros. Okay. Whatever other values are not, uh, you know, um, significant. So, we have, it will be filled with zero and only these values which are impacted or you know, uh, evaluated based on the last arithmetic operation performed which impacts those flags. So that will be there in the sensor CB flags and that we are moving into R0. Okay, If this is the instruction MRS. Okay. Now if you have MSR that is another instruction which moves uh, some special value whatever you have in a special register or uh, uh, general purpose register into the special register. MSR is another instruction which moves no, general purpose register content into a special register. So, we are not uh, talking about this instruction now. Okay, We are uh, using this MRS instruction. Now, let me go through this. Now, the APSR register is the same order that NCCV is there. R0 which is coming into this function, it is an assembly function and uh, R0 is coming into this function uh, with a value 0x, zero A, zero, 0, 0, B, 0, 0, 2 zeros are there, okay, um, A, 0, 0 and then B, 0, 0, there is a 0 here, okay, there is a gap, so this is a 4 value, this is, 1 zero is missing here, so remember that, okay, there is 1 zero maybe, I can add it now, so that it is completely a 32 bit value, this is the uh, 16 bit value, now what is R1, R1 is having 0 X, okay, 0 X, 8000, and 2000. Okay. So, these are the two values which are there in R0 and R1 before this function is called. That means what? Already these registers, either these parameters are being passed or you assume that R0, R1 are already loaded with these values. Now, what are we doing here? We need to understand this instruction LSL, left shift, logical shift left, okay, LSL, R0 by 4 bit. Logical left shift means this way. 4, which value R0, I am shifting it by 4 and then writing it to 4 R0. So, this value, whatever I have already, I am saying that before this instruction, this instruction is executed, R0 is filled with this value and we are moving it by 4. Now, what happens? This A moves here, right? Now, then 0 moves here and 0 will come in, okay? So, R0 will become, okay, 0x is there, assume. 0, 0, this 0 will come, so 4, another 0, then B is there, 2 zeros are already there, 1 0 is coming in, not this 1 0, it is 4 zeros are coming in, please, please remember this is uh, R0 and it is hexadecimal number. Now, whatever value 800, this 8000 is actually, this A is moving into this 0's location and this zero is going out and new zero is coming in here, okay, four zeros are coming in. So, this whole thing is bit, bit pattern is shifted to the left. So, we have A thousand and B thousand, okay, that is all, okay. Um, just, uh, 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 we cannot call it as a thousand, but uh, A, A triple zero and then B followed by triple zero. Now, this instruction is done. Now, what are we doing the next instruction? Add R zero comma R zero comma R one. Now, what is this doing? add instruction, it is adding R0 and R1 and then it is keeping the result into R0, okay. So, this value which is in R0 and R1 is here, so we need to add them. So, let me write it here for clarity. So, let us use some different color here, so that, okay, black is one option. So, R0 is filled with this value. So, let me, I am not, I am dropping that oh, 0x right now. I am sure you all are, you are all clear that it is all hexadecimal value. Each of them correspond to 4 bits in binary form. And then R1 is having 8000 here and then 2000. Now, you need to perform an addition. Please, uh, you have to know whether you are performing a hand operation or operation or any logical operation or 
arithmetic operation like plus. Now, 0 and 0 is added, you, either you are doing it in a hexadecimal form or a binary form, it will be 0. So, if you are not very comfortable adding it in hexadecimal form, I suggest you write it in a binary form and perform the addition. But here, see, a corresponds to 10, okay, in decimal. B is 11, okay, that much you should know. Now, 11 plus 2 is 13. You know that C is 12 and D is 13, right? So, yeah, because everything we are writing it in hexadecimal, we should not suddenly write 1, 3 here, which will be totally wrong. So, because we are writing everything in hexadecimal, maybe to, for a clarity purpose, I will write 0 x here. So, we are writing everything in hexadecimal. Remember that. It is not normal 0. It is a 4 binary numbers. So, D I have to write, okay, if I am adding this. If I am doing it in a binary form, maybe I will do, you no, know, A is 1, 0, 1 and then another 1. I am sorry, this is, oh, sorry, A is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 is A, 8 plus 2 is 10, B is another 1, so 11, okay, uh, 11 and then I am doing a 2, which is 1, 0, then what will you get, 1, this is 0 and 1, I am sorry, I have to move it up a little bit, uh, this 1 and 1 is 0 and 1 here, 1 is already there. So, this is 12 plus 1, 13, which is nothing but D. So, I am performing this addition in hexadecimal, though if you are very confused or want to be sure, you can perform it in binary uh, form. Now, you write 0 plus 0, you do not need to do any binary. Now, A and 8. There is a likelihood that we may make a mistake. So, let us write it in binary form. A is nothing but 10, which is 8 plus 2. So, this is A. 8 is, we know that 1 followed by 3 zeros is 8. So, if I perform an addition, 0, 1, 0 and 0 and 1 comes here. Okay. What about here? Is there any carry here? No, zero. So this why am I doing this? Because I want to know the flags also, right? So if uh, a is 1010, zero, one, zero, I know 8 plus 2 is 10, uh, and then 8 is this, and I am performing an addition, this will be 1 and 0 and 0 is there, then there is no carry here, 0 carry, and then 1 and 1 are added, this will be 0, and I have a carry which is going out. So there is a carry which is going out. And the result is 2 here. Okay, I have to write 2 and a carry flag is set. So, C is 1. Now, what about N flag? N flag is this, This if I write it in this, this 2 is nothing but 0, 0, 1, 0. So, this is the MSB bit, most significant bit, which is 0. So, negative flag is 0. Now, what about the overflow flag? This is giving a carry 0, whereas, whereas this carry is 1. So, if you recall, I said that last two carries are fed to an XR gate to find out the overflow flag. Now, because 0, 1 is fed to the XR gate, you know that V will be 1, right? So, V is 1. Now, what about 0 flag? 0 flag is, this is the result and we have a D here and 2 here, which is not all zeros. That means, it's 0 flag is 0. So, you have found the flags. Now, we are performing the addition. Please try practicing different numbers, but you do not know how to verify it. Um, I suggest two people doing it and then making sure that both of you are getting the answer. Hopefully, um, both of you do, should do the right job. So, now, this is the result we are getting. Okay. Um, now, I want you to find out what is this. APSR is now See, once the add operation is performed, this flags will be affected. The flags are written in the, you know, into the APSR NZCV form. They are ordered in this way. So, I should uh, write it, this values what I found, I have to write it in this way. Uh, 0, 0 flag is 0, C is 1 and V is 1. That means, what is this value? This corresponds to 3. Now, this APSR value is going to be written into R0. Now, I told you that this flags are ordered in the APSR register as a higher nibble in NZCV form, right? Um, that means 0011 and then rest of it is going to be 0. 
that means in hexadecimal if i write it it will be 3 followed by how many zeros this is one 16 bit word i will leave a gap another 16 bit word this is the value which is going to be written into r0 and vxlr will come out of the function uh, return to the uh, calling function so r0 value will be this value will be there okay and you have to give specifically what are the flag values okay so you need to give flag values as well as what is being returned in hexadecimal form which is 3000 and then another four zeros okay this is the answer for this fifth question i hope this is clear to you now we will just quickly now i'll see other questions right isr is was the most uh, uh, intriguing or you know, difficult concept for many of you so let me explain about the isr okay before that let us read the question what is an isr isr is an interrupt service routine what does the below i squared c isr function okay when does the below isr function get invoked by the slave device connected to the i squared c bus so i have to give you some explanation um, let us go into i squared c so this is a master device and i squared c connections i am sure you are aware acl sda and ground also to be connected i told you in the previous video and this is a slave device both are i squared c devices now what is happening is master is deciding the transmission and then assume that master is sending some data to the slave device then the data is received by the a squared c block okay it could be i to c 0 or i to c 1 okay remember if you are uh, in, you know, in, invoking this wire is the name that we use it wire um, wire 1 is the um, library function um, object will be using it for i squared c1 block anything to do with that so now this is i have wire which is i squared c0 two blocks are there I have two i squared c blocks are there in the rp2040 now imagine one, one of the i squared c, i am not saying any which i squared c block here but one of the block has received the data now what happens when the block is receiving the data it is available inside the block which is i squared c hardware but CPU does not know that the data has come in the I squared C bus because it is outside the processor and CPU is busy doing its own you know execution of instruction. It does not know what is happening on the I squared C bus connected to another device or even for that matter UART is connected to another device. It does not know. CPU should be informed or CPU should come and look at it. Now in our case what we are doing in this receive command is we are programming it in such a way that if there is a data which is available on the i squared c bus which has come on the i squared c bus and it is available in the slave device suppose in our case it is a slave device it has received a command okay in our case maybe some command is received now i want it to be in you know uh, i want this to be interrupting my cpu saying that a hey, the data has come now what do i do what do i do is uh, we write a isr which is a interrupt service routine okay now when is it going to be invoked whenever any external event has happened and then you want some action to be performed on that event it's like when calling bell is pressed at uh, in our house we go out and open the door or we ask them who is uh, standing outside or if it's a courier guy we receive it and then sign the letter or give a otp to receive any item from uh, amazon then we close the job and come back and do what we were doing similarly what does a cpu do cpu is performing some instruction execution uh, imagine that it is doing some IR operation uh, we are which we are we are very familiar interrupts can happen any time okay it could be we cannot decide when somebody is going to give a you know come to the entrance and press a calling bell so we don't have a control we will be doing something and the interrupt can come any time similarly when the cpu is executing the instruction at any point in time during the execution itself at that particular instant an interrupt can come or uh, the data has been received then what happens the cpu completes the execution in you know uh, uh, execution executing the instruction whatever it is doing currently whatever add instruction it is completing the execution then it will be checking for any interrupt has come or not that suppose if you have registered for the interrupt it's like you no know, uh, you want it to be interrupted okay then only the interrupt can happen otherwise now if you are disabled your calling bell inside that 
then even if somebody presses the calling bell, you will not be hearing any sound. So you can disable the interrupt also. So here, assuming that you have enabled it and you want it to be interrupted, when the CPU want, I want to be interrupted when some data is received. So now what happens, this I2C block, what does it do when the data is received? It is already informed that, okay, if you receive a data, please call a function, okay. We are saying that this is the function you are supposed to call. We are registering that function, call, you know, it's called a, a callback function or an ISR and it is a C function and we are saying that please call this function whenever you receive a character uh, on the I2C bus. Now what does this come, you know, function say? It receives an integer which is called as length and then it returns nothing. Now ISR functions, as I told you, it can be called any at any point in time. So you don't have a specific occasion or the location where it is going to be called. So when you don't know when when this interrupt is going to be coming, you cannot expect this interrupt to return something because you may be in the middle of some execution and you don't know where you are going to be. So you cannot expect somebody to return some value to you. So it is like this when you are in transit, you cannot ask someone to, you know, somebody cannot expect to, uh, you know, hand over some package to you. You know, if you are traveling in a train or a bus, if they can't throw a packet to you, at, at you and you can receive it through a window, right? It's not possible. If suppose you are stopping in a station, yes, somebody can exchange something with you. Okay. Similarly, when the CPU is executing continuously some instruction, you can't expect the ISR to return some value to you. And you don't know when it is going to be called and when it is going to be executed. So it doesn't return anything and it is receiving a, a parameter. Now who is passing this parameter? Now before even uh, worrying about who is passing the parameter, you should know who is going to call this function. You are actually registering this function as a function pointer with the device. Okay, you are telling the device when you receive the uh, you know uh, receive a command or a data on the slide you see please call this function you are supposed to call this function okay it is assigned to some particular interrupt number i'm not going to the details of that but imagine this function is going to be called now i squared c has a mechanism where it can receive a set of bytes it could be one byte or maximum maybe some limit is there based on the square c block n number of bytes it would have received now it will receive all those n number of bytes and then going, going to call the function now only the i squared c block knows how many data or how many bytes it has received. So since the I square C block is calling this particular function, I am not calling it from CPU or CPU is not even aware when it is going to be called. So the I square C block, whenever interrupt has happened, when the data reception is completed, it knows how many bytes have been received on the I square C network and or a bus. Then it calls the function, which is an ISR with the parameter getting passed to it uh, as a number of bytes received. That's all, okay. Then you will put uh, any processing that you want it to be done. You can, in fact, set a flag or you can uh, receive the command and then process it, whatever it is. You know, we are not going into the detail, but only thing what you should be aware that this is going to be called asynchronously without the control of the CPU on any time during the execution. Now, even if an instruction is being executed, it cannot be interrupted in the middle. The ex currently executing instruction will be completed and the CPU will service the interrupt. Remember, even this function is being executed on the CPU itself, okay. CPU only is going to execute the ISR also. In that case, what? It is going to use those registers that you have been using it in your program. When you perform an add operation, you have put the result in R0. Now, what happens when the ISR comes? ISR may be modifying the R0 value. So, what happens is, whenever an ISR comes, the CPU automatically has some mechanism to store all those registers in some stack, okay. It could be the stack which currently the processor is uh, using or it could be another shadow stack, don't bother about it. It is going to push all the registers and then the ISR is going to be serviced. That means the function which is what is shown here will be executing and then you will pop out all the values. So this is a complete story. Now what are you, what are you expected to answer for this two marks question? Say interrupt is ISR is an interrupt service routine. Uh, what does the below function do? This function is invoked or uh, when the I squared C block receives some characters, a n number of bytes 
from the other side of the device okay on the network on the i2c bus then this function is passed with the number of bytes received and this function is going to be called in the middle of some add assembly instruction the cpu is going to complete the currently executing instruction and then services this function that means it is executing this function so before calling this function or the isr all the registers are saved in the stack and this function is executed then all the registers are restored back then and it continues with whatever it was doing so if you state only these sentences or these words it is enough and you have understood about isr okay so i hope this is clear if you don't please rewind and listen to this carefully these are the set of operations performed okay okay at the interest of time i am proceeding to the next question i hope this is clear to you now let us look at the dma okay now dma is something which i have also talked about it let earlier we need to con configure the dma direct memory access you have to configure now what on that you have to configure what is the size of data transfer okay it is a 8 bit or what is it so i am going to configure the dma so let me ex you know and you know explain this each of this uh, very clearly now this is uh, this particular thing is a structure defined internally by the library or sdk software development kit of ap2040 and this is our variable of this type structure okay dma channel config and this is the default configuration okay and we are passing a channel number okay with before that assume that a particular channel number is selected which is available in uh, dma block of our uh, rp2040 if you recall i have told you that dma block has 12 channels that means 12 transactions from point a to point b from either memory to say memory or peripheral to memory or memory to peripheral whatever is can be happening in parallel 12 channels are there this like a 12 lanes on a highway but we are passing a particular channel number by choosing a particular channel which is free now which is not no uh, transaction is happening in uh, right now that we are passing it and then we are getting a configuration okay uh, already filled default configuration then we are going to change that because we are passing the address of that and then saying that i want a, a dma size of 8 okay uh, i want a transfer size of data size of 8 bits okay and then i want it to be incrementing so whenever it is transferring some data from a address okay uh, suppose i am having a array of bytes and then i want it to be written into some array of uh, uh, locations this is also a memory and, and this is also a memory this is a source pointer and this is a destination pointer now i will only give the initial pointer address right now i can't keep writing the suppose i am reading this data and then writing into the first location now the dma cannot keep you know reading the same content and writing into the same content right it has to keep going further down based on the length of the data that you have asked the dma to copy so it will go to the it will increment now it should know whether the pointer that i have given initially to be incremented or decremented i can do it in a uh, two ways so i am setting it up saying that please read pointer you increment it write pointer also incremented you can do, do it in a different ways also but in our case we are just incrementing the pointer and then destination also you know this is called right read pointer and this is called a right pointer okay you are writing into it you are reading from it so read pointer is incremented on every after every transaction that means it byte is received and dma receives it and push it here and then it increments the pointer and then creates another byte and puts it in the next location it goes on how long does it go as long as the particular length of bytes are been transferred so that we will be giving it separately we are just saying that increment right and increment the read pointer and then size of 8 bits okay that's all we are saying now we are going to start the dma now dma channel configure which channel i am saying which channel number out of 12 then this configuration has been already initialized so that address of that configuration structure which this library function will understand so we are passing the address of that configuration structure then passing the pointer so i it's my interest right i my pointer could be anywhere so i have to inform the dma please access it from this uh, source and destination pointer so read that from the source pointer and write into this destination pointer so that's are the initial addresses okay 
and then how many number of bytes I have to do. So this is the based on the size of the source uh, array. I am saying count of that man and that many number of bytes you read. Now if I pass true here, this DMA channel will start immediately. Okay, start immediately. Then this transaction will start immediately as soon as this code is done. Now what do you have to write in the exam? If this question comes, just say that we are finding the free channel number out of 12 which are available in DMA block and choosing one of them and then that channel number is available in CHAN which is fed to the default config and we are getting a default configuration. Now channel number has already been selected and that for that particular channel we are creating a configuration, default configuration which is which is filled with some value and then we are only modifying the size and then saying that the read pointer and write pointer should be incremented here that's all okay then say that we are starting the dma using this function which is a library function and passing the channel number and the configuration which we have already set default value we took but modified only what is required then we are passing the destination address and source address and how many number of bytes to be transferred from the source address to the destination address and we say it is true because we want a DMA transaction or a DMA transfer to start immediately. That once the CPU execute this, then DMA transfer happens. That's all you need to write. Maybe half a page, not more than that. Please make sure that you don't spend too much time because you have two hours. Manage the time properly and bring out the key points that send us. You, you can even bulletize it. Uh, no, you can even practice. No, how do I write it in a crisp manner? Okay. If once you understand it, Bringing up with the summary is easier. Okay, uh, fine. That's it. Now we will quickly look into the LDR SB, um, which all of you are already aware based on my previous uh, exa, you know, uh, explanation. So LDR SB, SB is first of all B is we are loading a byte and from memory. Okay, it is from memory to register. LDR is always that way, and B means we are saying a byte only byte we are reading so remember always the registers are 32 bit byte and i am using only one byte so each of the bytes suppose now or you know uh, maybe here i have put ldrsb r1 so inside r1 and then r0 is having the address whatever the content of the address which is a byte address okay i am saying that it is 8a so 8a is coming here but Remember inside the CPU all the operations are performed across the two, using all the 32 bit value. It's not going to possible for you to only take one small pot of it. Suppose you are eating in a on a plate, even though you, you have one vada here on the one corner, but the entire plate is given to you, whether you like it or not. Nobody is going to put their own food and along with your on your plate and then start eating. Maybe if you are too close friends, maybe you can do it. But in general, we expect the one plate to be for handled by one person, right? Similarly, one register is handled for one operation. Even if I am using a part of the register, I need to have a valid values in this higher part, okay? Because we don't know what was stored prior to this load operation, right? R1 may be having something else, okay? But since we are going to operate and uh, considering the entire 32 bit, we need to make sure that the entire 32 bit is having a valid value. It's like when you are using a eating plate, you normally pick up and then say that every part of the plate is clean, right? We rub it off every nook and corner of the plate, though you may be eating only one part of it, right? But you want this side also to be clean. You don't want, anyway, you are saying the half of the plate I am going to use, so let the other half be dirty. You know, we don't like it, right? Similarly, even if you are interested in only copying one particular uh, byte value from the memory, we want this to be clean. Now, what do I mean by cleaning? Whether I am bringing in a signed number or unsigned number. If I am bringing a signed number, that signed number is going to have a MSB set. Now, it's a byte, then 8A is signed bit number is set here. Okay. As far as the byte is concerned, the MSB is the BZF7. If it is set, it needs to be all one. Okay. Because the value of uh, a 32 bit number will be the same negative number. Okay. If, uh, if all ones are there, it will still continue to be a negative number but the value will also be remaining the same. So let me give one example so that you understand it, what I mean by that. Suppose you are moving a minus one number, okay? Minus one, I can represent it, okay?
okay sorry minus 1 i can represent it as all ones but if it is a just 8 bit number okay this is also minus 1 but when i am just moving this ff here into 32 bit number b31 to b0 okay all this also should be one okay because all 32 bit value all ones is also a minus one value how do you know maybe because once uh, msb is set you know that it is a negative number you will complement all of them two's complement you will find all zeros it will become then you will add a one so it will be one here so the magnitude is one which because you did a two's complement it is minus one so whether all ones are a 32 bit value or only this value they are still the value is same so you are retaining the same negative value that you have brought in or a positive value you have brought in so sign number means remember if the msb of the byte which is moving into the register happens to be one then you extend the one suppose if you are moving this ata in this case you will move all this one here so the result will be fff okay how many fi to put 4f here then 2f here that original value ati will remain the same okay so this is the 32 bit value you will have now what if, if i am moving a positive number so suppose i moved the 7 2 0 x 7 2 i moved okay now if i am moving 0 x 7 2 what is the binary equivalent 0 1 1 1 okay and then 0 0 1 0 now this is 1 so if i am moving the 7 2 into a, a register this 0 will be moved in all zeros will be there so do, no don't, don't think that if i am doing a s byte all will be f it will not be okay it depends on the byte value if i am doing a s h then it depends on the this particular bit okay 6 b 15 i go that's all so what is the result all f's maybe uh, 4 f's then another 2 f's then ata will be the answer okay when it is loading into the r0 register what will be the content okay that's the answer now final question draw the connection between ur device okay very simple uh, you all done the lab so two ur devices okay what i want you to do is uh, two ur devices are connected then txd of this will be connected to rxd of the another device okay rxd and then rxd of this will be connected to txd of this okay it's uh, reverse okay it is not like scl and sda okay you, you should it is a uh, reverse but i am drawing it straight away but otherwise you have to draw a cross line but signal if you are showing it's fine ground has to be connected so this is what you have to show you know please bring up you no know, pen and the scale maybe uh, so that the line looks like a line so draw the connection between your devices label the signal and uh, but no need to mention the pin numbers i don't want you to mug up any pin numbers explain the communication happening between them to the connections you have made now you have to say that anything going from this device will go here and anything coming from this is this okay so you can say that data from uh, maybe you can call it as device one and then device two and uh, you can say that device one to device two data will be going like this at the same time if device 2 is sending the data it will be going in this direction that's all you have to mention and uh, and the baud rate one more important most important thing is i will choose the baud rate of both as the same okay um, so it should be both should be same otherwise uh, you are talking in english and the other person is thinking that you are talking in malayalam then you, nobody will understand it right so both should uh, be at the same rate okay that's all done now last question explain about the instruction push r3 r1 r2 okay uh, i already explained a lot so uh, let me quickly complete that push r3 r1 r2 so first thing what you should do okay um, order that in the increasing number okay r1 r2 r3 you are pushing it so remember that pushing is uh, uh, writing into the stack so it is full descending so it is going to be going down this is a higher address this is the lower address okay uh, i hope you can understand my handwriting um, stack pointer is 
R13 is here. You can assume any address because 1000 I have given. So uh, let uh, R13 be equal to 1000. Okay. Um, okay. Now it is full descending. So it is, you cannot write into this location which is already full. Now you need to push three number uh, registers. Okay. Each of them are uh, four byte wide. Now which is the lowest address? Now 1000. This will be next will be 996, 992 and then 988 right this is the last number now the lowest address will have the lowest register number so r1 will move here r2 will move here r3 will move here okay so explain about the instruction and assume that this is having 1000 prior to the execution of the instruction so it will be sufficient if you draw this graph you know uh, picture and then show clearly this where the r1 r3 r2 are going to be residing and then say that it is full descending and uh, you know the wherever it is pointing at 1000 will not be disturbed and it will go down the location and fill the values that's all i hope all these videos helped you and all of you can get 30 out of 30 mostly the questions will be similar it not be the same it will be similar to what i have explained in this model question paper and i want you to practice more so that you don't make careless mistakes in the exam that's all you need to take care and and uh, you can also refer this table which is going to be uh, given along with the question paper and i'm sure you will be able to do well understand it well discuss among yourself and understand it in depth and you are free to ask me any questions you can message me and whenever i have fine time i will reply you all the very best for your exam do well and i'm happy sharing this with you all the very best. See you in the next semester with full energy. Bye-bye. Best of luck. And all the very best to you.